الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The believer should always strive to be conscious of other human beings rights so in fact you could say Islam protects preserves acknowledges human rights more than anything else Islam which is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us those rights and it gives us how we should look and view other people how we should interact with one another as human beings Muslims and non-Muslims everyone has a right your neighbor has a right over you your elders have a right over you your parents have rights over you your children have rights over you and in a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam illustrated and emphasized the importance of acknowledging those rights and in this hadith qala imam bukhari he put this in the chapter title entitled in his book uh, adab mufrid he entitled this chapter bab fadl al kabir the chapter of the benefits of those uh, of the elders of, of or the the elder of the person who is is um, whose age uh, who, who who's an elder qala hadathana ahmed qala hadathana ahmed ibn isa qala hadathana abdullah ibn wahab an abi sakhr an abi qusayt عن أبي هريرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من لم يرحم صغيرنا ويعرف حق كبيرنا فليس منا In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم that was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه and may Allah be pleased with all the صحابة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said Whoever is not merciful towards our young and does not know the rights of our elders then they are not from us. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we see many benefits that the ulama uh, explain from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the fiqh of this hadith the understanding of this hadith the ahkam or the, the, the rulings and judgments and ways of interaction that we derive from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because that's the sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that it's there for us to benefit from it's there for us to practice and implement in our life and it's there as a warning for us to of what to stay away from and a bushra uh, you know there uh, glad tidings of what's in store for us if we do that which is right and if we follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kama qala ta'ala wa atiullah wa atiu rasul that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and follow allah or obey Allah and obey His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, also all throughout the Quran orders us وَعَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَرْحَمُونَ In order that you, so follow Allah and follow His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam in order that you will receive mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, He has ordered us uh, in order that you would what? Have mercy. Allah uh, 
links mercy, his mercy, and that mercy will be descend upon you by obedience to Allah. And obedience to who? The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. So in this hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam advised us, we should be obedient and follow his sunnah alayhi afdal salatu wasalam. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al-khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided predecessors, meaning Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So in this sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu where he said, Men lem yarham saghirina, whoever does not, uh, whoever does not, is not merciful to our, our youth. وَيَعْرَفْ حَقَّ كَبِيرِنَا And does not know or does not uh, give the rights to our elders. فَلَيْسَ minna. Then he is not from us. The ulama explain the term laysa minna here. Ay laysa ala sunnatina o laysa min ahla kimal minna. So they explain that what is meant here by laysa minna, that the Prophet is giving a stern warning, which means that they are not upon our sunnah, meaning our way, our tariqah, our path, or it means laysa min ahli kimal minna that they are not on they're not perfecting and and having complete iman or completely following the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this shows a naqs in iman this shows a person is not fulfilling full iman it is not in full iman laysa minna here as with many of the ahadith does not mean that the person is a disbeliever and this the people who claim that that this term laysa minna here in this hadith and many of the other ones uh, means that they are not uh, no longer Muslim. This is su'a fahm. This is a, a, a wicked understanding and a understanding which is not in accordance with the rest of the adilla and uh, the rest of the evidences that Ahlul Sunnah has taken from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The evidences of the Quran that show that rather this meaning here means that their iman is weak. That they're not coming with the complete wajibat. They're still Muslim. They're still believers. But they're weak. Why? Because they're not fulfilling the rights of the, the youth. They're not kind and gentle with the, 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 uh, the youth and the, the children. And they are not fulfilling the rights of the elders, the kibirina, uh, uh, as the Prophet wasallam said. So this hadith has several uh, benefits that are derived, that the ulama have derived. One of them, فِيهِ فَضْلُ حَبِّ اللَّهِ حُبِّ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَصَالِحِينَ وَأَهْلَ خَيْرَ So one of the benefits from this hadith that the scholars derive is that in this hadith it illustrates for us the benefits of the benefit of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of having love of Allah the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, who gave you another chance to wake up, who gave you another chance to make toba, who gave you another chance to do a good deed, who gave you another chance to be with your family, who gave you another chance to be uh, gentle and kind with one another, who gave you another chance to practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it also illustrates the love of the Messenger of Allah alayhi afdal salatu wa salam sallallahu alayhi and this hadith also illustrates for us the benefit of loving the Salihin, the righteous, the righteous who live amongst us, the scholars, the talabat al-ilm, the du'at al-khair, the people who are known for their worship, the people who are known for good and good righteous conduct, those people are from the Salihin. So this shows their fadl. Also the salihun came from uh, before us, the salaf al-salih, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, meaning the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, first and foremost, and the tabi'een, those who followed them in righteousness, and the itba'a tabi'een, those who were the students of the tabi'een, who met tabi'een, and who were unrighteous and fadl and khair, the, those people of the salihin, also the, those ulama and scholars and imams of the sunnah who came after them, through the who followed them in righteousness, the imams, the imams that uh, of the Sunnah and the Salihin, Imam Maqdisi, Imam Nawawi, Imam Ibn Hazm, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Ibn Al Qayyum, Imam uh, all the Imams, Imam Shafi, Imam uh, before them, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam 
Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in, rahmatullah alayhim, rahmatan wasiyah. So all of these people are the Salihin. Especially those people who carried and preserved the deen, the, the imams of Jarrah wa Ta'adil, who preserved the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Bukhari, Imam Tirmidhi, Imam Ibn Majah, Imam Nisai, Imam, uh, uh, all, all these great uh, imams of the Sunnah who preserved the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're the Salihin. So we should love them. That is from Iman. And that is from the completeness of, completeness of Iman. That means if you you are lacking in that, that doesn't remove your Iman. The person still has Iman. They're still from Ahl Sunnah. They're still from Ahl Iman. From Ahl Khair. But they're naqs in their Iman. Another benefit derived from this hadith is this hadith also shows us the the happiness of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum that they had a great farha to Sahaba to Azimah we have a hadith, the Sahaba ta'ala, were very happy uh, when they heard this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, because إِذَا كَانَ يُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَقَدْ بَشَرَهُمَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِأَنَّ الْمَرْءِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا مَنْ أُحَبْ فَتَوَقَعُوا أَنَّهُمْ يَكُونُونَ so the Sahaba were very happy when they heard this hadith. Of extremely happy, ecstatic. Why? Because they felt that uh, from the khabr of the Prophet because they loved Allah. And they loved the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had given them glad tidings that a person in another hadith will be with, on the Day of Judgment, will be resurrected with those people whom they love. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu loved Allah and they loved the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So then they felt and they uh, tried, they put it in their minds that it was possible that they would be uh, resurrected uh, and, and be in Jannah with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Those are just some of the benefits from this hadith. So it shows us that we should strive our best to be kind and gentle with the Salir. And this is a, uh, something we should take into heart and try to implement in our lives. Be Nice with our children, but nice in general with children. Be kind with them. Show them good examples. Pat them on the head. Reward them. Be patient with them because they require so much patience. When they're not our children and when they're our children, they require so much patience that we should try our best to say a kind word with them. Listen to them. We've heard, we know that maybe what they're saying is redundant or it's kind, you know, we, we already know the answer. But ask them, oh, so what do you mean by that? To be kind, to show an interest in what they have to offer. Also, also, we should be kind and gentle and give the rights to the elders. Let the elder go into the doorway first. Let the elderly man come into the masjid, the sheikh come into the masjid before you. Uh, your elders, be kind with your parents. Be gentle with all the elders you know and you don't know. Sometimes you, and it takes extra patience to be with the elders. Sometimes you have honorary old men or honorary old women. How should you be? Be even more patient with them. You're right, you're right, I was mistaken. Yes, 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 you're right. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, be respectful and kind and gentle. Even with that old man shaking his stick at you. Even with that old, man, old woman who's glaring at you and speaking bad with you. Don't curse her. Don't speak ill to her. Be patient with her. Because she lived a long life. And Allah has given her uh, uh, that station. And given them them fadl, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. So they have a fadl, they, uh, um, they have rights over us. So we should be respectful, we should be kind. Even if we find that they have shortcomings, overlook their shortcomings, be kind and gentle with them. Help the old lady across the street. Help the old man across the street. Help them into their car. They drop something, help it and get it for them. Carry their bags for them. All of these things are good things that you will be rewarded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala if you do it for the same of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam